Apostle Joshua Selman Nemac is the president of Eternity Network International, an interdenominational apostolic ministry which started out in Zaria Kaduna State but is now based in the federal capital territory of Nigeria, Abuja. Motivated by his deep love for the body of Christ, Apostle Selman regularly teaches believers across various denominations with unusual insights into God's word, and his ministrations are marked with awesome manifestations of God's power. He is a host of Koinonia, a weekly program that attracts thousands of people desiring to experience worship, word, miracles, love, and true intimacy with the Holy Spirit deepening their fellowship with God and preparing them to fulfill their divine destiny. A mentor and father to many, Selman is fondly loved and regarded by thousands of young adults across the nation and beyond as a model and icon of the next generation. By default, there is no advantage anywhere for any man. You introduce systems of advantage into your destiny as you go. The first of them being salvation. It's like making do with whatever grows in a farm. And what grows in a farm without being planted is weed. So I come from a family, for instance, with no advantage. And now it is my responsibility under God to understand God and his ways and then introduce to my destiny systems of advantage that begin to correct errors that I met. Ladies and gentlemen, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It's my joy to be here and I truly am honored to be in your city. Hallelujah. Please, while standing, help me appreciate Pastor Jerry and his wonderful wife. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And an amazing, amazing man of God. And the wonderful things that he's doing. You know, while he was talking about me, I wish I had the chance to tell him, I hope you know that you are describing yourself too. Praise the name of the Lord. Truly, I celebrate what God is doing in this city through this great vessel of God. The lives that have been changed, destinies transformed. I think we can honor him one more time. God bless you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh. His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul Worship His holy name Father, tonight, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray that you will do mighty things in our midst. We have come with our hearts open. We have come with hunger. We have come to receive. We have come to be transformed. We have come to be imparted. We decree and declare tonight that there is the hearing of faith and also the working of miracles. Lord, I thank you because no life represented here inside and outside following online will be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. You love prayer. Can we pray for a minute or two? Please lift your voice and pray in the spirit. Shebrantos ke la prahas kada balakatos. Shkata balakata prondos kada balahashideas. Paratus sate brende ke di balahas kada balatus. Sha 
Kataka parata kato sate balato sekete prenda skate balakata. Shekete prasada shalanda prato sekete balada balada bosi. Shekete pakata prando sase pakata la hosiata. Shekete paruto soprante ke balato siata. Let your spirit be open. Shanda Sabarato Salikata Branda Gadabarutia Shikreti Gedibalataba Shekete Bakato Skela Panda Shela Shekete Bakata Branda Gadusiata Shekete Bekete Palada Balada Bos Sipari Skebarita Shalatus Kabadiata I release the sound of the heavens, sound of creation, Yahweh is here. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. I cry holy, holy. Holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. Shalibarakato saprande gede baradusiata. Shile paruska de barutasia. Don't be tired. It's part of the meeting. Skimende shalentos kabaruta shabra gede kotos. Shegeba kato sali branda kato seketele kata. Shalabarata kata branda kata barus kebere ketos yata. Shile paruta siata. Si barakato sali branda kata variata. Streams of joy. Abia state. Pray your way to a new dimension in the spirit. Haya haya ha. Let me prophesy upon your life. You will never be the same. His grace, your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. We are going to sit down shortly, but the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire resting. I'm seeing the number 34. Inside and outside, I stretch my hands. Please help anyone under the anointing. I stretch my hands. Here at this conference, the grace and the unction of the Spirit. Take that grace now. Please help them. Take that grace now. From the front to the back. Paris Koberekata. Shalepa Katoskepata. Embrekete parus kobeto shelepa iparatoskia. All of the overflows, drink of this fountain. Let it shift you to new dimensions in the spirit. Please help this lady. Shelekatas kabarusete. Embrekete kete 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 kete. Skali paruntos kobariata. Sir. Touch this man for me. Look at me. Lift your hands. There is an anointing coming on you. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands upon you. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lend my faith with Pastor Jerry. God is doing something in this place tonight. I assure you that you will never be the same. Never be the same. Informer. Informer. Who is Informer? I'm hearing a name. Informer. The angel of the Lord is telling me she's in this room. If former, is there someone like that? 
Your name is Ifoma. Where are you coming from, madam? Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You live here. For now, yes, temporary. No, no, no. Just, just take it easy, my dear. Please. Let's just, let's be organized about this. I want to pray for you. My dear, look at me. This lady. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Take that grace now. You will never be the same. I curse that spirit out of your life forever. In the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Stand up. Here at this ministry, you will never forget this conference. I look at you and I see oppression around your life. And the Lord is saying, let it go now. I curse that spirit once and for all. Once I cast that spirit out of her destiny, hear me, if there is anything that followed you here, I stand by the God of heaven, joining faith with your pastor under this apostolic and prophetic grace, I declare that that, that spirit must give way tonight. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray. Enough is enough. I speak and I declare that here upon this mountain, everything that does not represent the counsel of the Christ, here at Streams of Joy, we make decrees by the Spirit that it comes to an end. Don't be tired, you will soon be seated. Am, am I fine? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring the lady that will shout now under the anointing, loud to the hearing of everyone. Please, I want to talk to her. The power of God is coming on a lady now. Bring her. Sile shalan sadas kobrate sele pahauria. Shalagada barado zikete brende koskala Taking the pain and the sorrow away You've given me peace undeniable There's no need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my heir It's your language, sing it Oh man, my Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah. It's a chant of the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Madam, where are you coming from? Just, you are, I'm seeing, what do you have to do with Abuja? Give her a mic. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming Abuja. from? Abuja. Abuja. Yes, sir. The Lord is about to change your life. Amen. I don't know who Amen. you are, but thank God Amen. who ordered your steps. Yes. I stretch my hands Amen. now. In the name of Jesus, fresh grace. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace on the night. I want to pray for you. That no infirmity 
will stand your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Is it alright if I talk to you, ma? I want to pray that the devil, please don't come out at random. Please. Please. There's no space here. I'll soon send a few people back so that we can teach. Ah, I'm looking at this woman and I'm seeing a serpent out of her destiny now. Out now. In the name of Jesus. Release her destiny. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Did the Bible not say blotting out every handwriting he says and every ordinance that spoke against us your bible declares that he nailed it to his cross hallelujah my mind the name of jesus christ i stand in faith with pastor jerry and we speak over your body the life the power of jesus christ destroys every trace and every planting of darkness over your body for the Bible declares that every tree that has not been planted by my father that that tree will be uprooted we uproot it right now and forever in the name of Jesus Christ for all of you who are here for whatever reason I can't even remember why you are here again but in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the hand of God you will go back free you will go back with liberty in the name of Jesus Christ May the grace of God speak over your life in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please return back rejoicing. Hallelujah. You'll be seated shortly. Am I wasting your time? There is a pastor here. You came with such a hunger. I'm seeing an anointing of the Spirit resting upon you now. You are, I'm not saying you are going into ministry. You are in ministry. I don't know if it's this city. The Spirit of God, the hand of God will come upon that man. I just want to talk to him right now. You are a pastor in ministry. And when that anointing comes upon you, it will shift your ministry to a new level in the Spirit. Sir, are you husband and wife? Lift your hands, both of you. Hold your hands and lift it. Lift it. Look at me. I don't know two of you. Are, are, are there are pastors in this city? From Port Harcourt. You believe in the power of the anointing? I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus. Take that grace. Two of you. Step into a new dimension of ministry. Signs, wonders, miracles by the Spirit of God. the pain and the sorrow away given me peace undeniable there's no need to cry cause you're always with me bless our hearts tonight oh God please sit down if you can my dear you are a member of this church I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the spirit. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what you do. But two things are going to happen to you. Number one, there is a multiplication of the grace for the prophetic. This is what I'm seeing by the spirit. And number two, the unction for favor is coming upon you. I stretch my hands by the spirit of grace. Step into that season. Step into that level. I take away limitations from your destiny by the spirit of grace. Can I tell you this? Happy are you when you find the grace sent to you. Not the grace available. The grace sent to you. There are words that are spoken, but there are words that are sent. It's such an honor to be part of this great assembly. Many of you may not know the kinds of transactions that are happening in the realm of the spirit. It is what is upon you that controls what is around you. What is around you is merely a report card. It's speaking to you and telling you what is upon you. So whilst we explore the word just for a few minutes, our time is already gone. I respect the time. 
just to touch on something tonight and then we'll pray. But I like for your heart to be sensitive because whilst the word of God is coming forth, the spirit of God is hovering like he always does within this auditorium and then even outside of this auditorium to all the overflows and our family watching online globally, just open up your heart to receive. There are impartations. You see, before you receive from a grace, study it. Study the operation and the dynamics of the spirit connected to that grace so that you can maximize it. If you come to a church like this, you study the operation of God's workings in your pastor. That will help you to know how to receive. Praise the name of the Lord. So let hope rise, darkness trembles in your own healer, let hope, let it rise, darkness trembles in your own Listen to me. Ephesians chapter 3. Pastor, when Paul began to teach the church in Ephesus, part of his apostolic ministry, helping to mentor and to build the church. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul began to speak about the basis of his ability to communicate spiritual things. And... Paul began to speak to the people to say how that it was by revelation he was granted access to what he calls the fellowship of the mystery. Like occultism, as though you were initiated to be a partaker of a body of spiritual truth. And he said among the many graces that were given to him, there was a strange one found in verse 9. Verse 9 says, there is a grace that can make all men see. It's a grace that supplies spiritual illumination and compels you to comprehend spiritual things regardless your intellectual limitations. It's an unction because you see, when we're dealing with spiritual things, we're not just dealing with matters of intellect. Uh -uh. It is a realm that flesh and blood cannot comprehend. He told Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this. So that dimension of revelation is higher than the realm that flesh and blood reveals. Are we together now? Yes. So he says, to make all men see that whilst you are in an atmosphere like this, suddenly the truths of scripture begin to open up to you and your eyes, your, your, your mind begins to comprehend these truths. Because in this kingdom, it is as far as your eyes can see. It says, lift up your eyes from where thou art. As far as your eyes can see, then it is given unto you. So can we look to the word of God for a minute or two? I have a number of things that I desire to share. My assignment by the grace of God is that every time God grants me the privilege to go to a territory, my assignment basically is by the spirit of grace to stand and support that which God is doing through the vessels within that territory and to do that by helping to supply dimensions of spiritual reality that can help strengthen the body of Christ within that territory. Because you see, a true apostolic grace is not a ministerial grace. It is an administrative grace. A true apostolic grace is mandated with the responsibility of coordinating the spiritual activities within a dispensation. That means that by the election of grace, you are granted the privilege to see to it that the body of spiritual knowledge allocated for a generation is effectively dispensed. 
So God supplies all of the spiritual arsenals that need to back you so that you are efficient in supplying those dimensions. And it is an honor, an honor to be granted this privilege and this grace by God to be a contributor, a strengthener, a lifter of the hands of men in the body. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's discuss a few things. I want to teach very briefly, wherever we stop tonight, we'll pray on spiritual patterns. Please pay attention to this teaching. I believe by the grace of God that in addition to that which your pastor has labored and continues to labor, communicating to you so that you are strengthened, that this truth alongside all the servants of God who have come and will be coming, that together as a coordinated army, that God will supply something in this conference that will shift you in reality to the next dimension. One thing I must commend about this church, sir, is that you are a passionate people who are full of faith. The faith of God is palpable within this assembly. It is true that you believe what you say. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 6. Verse 16. When we have it projected and you can see it, please read. Ready? Read. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find... Listen, 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 don't rush. The Bible shows us here that for the believer, there is a relationship between asking, walking, and rest that the pathway to rest starts when you ask then when you are shown you obtain grace to walk in that path and then you will find rest are we together now now all across the globe there are men and women who continue to press towards spiritual things in hope that they will be able to find the principles of the kingdom that are responsible for the various outcomes that we desire all over the world pastor from the US to Asia to Europe to Africa men and women continue to search for the keys that control the various dimensions of possibilities in the kingdom for others they seek to know the dynamics that is responsible for the miraculous. For others, they want to search for the principles that control the blessing of the Lord upon the life of a believer in reality. For others, they seek to find out the keys that are responsible for influence and access like you so greatly prophesied. Where kings agree that you are king over them. The Bible says several men came to David in the cave of Adullam and that they said that they submitted himself to be king over them. Are we together? Now, as you might have heard me say, this kingdom that we are part of is a compendium of infinite possibilities. You have to agree on this. Are we together now? that the possibilities that are in this kingdom are as vast as God himself. And that means that in the entire span of a believer's journey, whatever you are able to capture throughout your lifetime becomes your, the frame of your understanding of who God is and how far he's able to take you. Are we together now? And that the theology that your life will write will be based on your perspective about God. And so all through history, we've had people come up with different ideas about who God is and the pathway that makes for victory in the kingdom. Others, as a result of their prolonged frustrations, have found ways to shut down certain names of God because of their experiences. 
they have lived long on the earth and have not been able to capture certain dimensions of God. And so to them, those dimensions no longer exist. It is dangerous to teach from the frame of your limitation. The Bible says in Acts chapter 18 that there was a man called Apollos. The Bible says he was a mighty man who was fervent in scripture. The kind of man every pastor will be looking for. The Bible says, but he knew only the baptism of John. One day he came for a conference like this and believed he was impressing everybody. And yet there were two strange people who sat in that congregation called Aquila and Priscilla. While they listened to him vent out his limitation, they appreciated his passion. But the Bible says after that service, they held him and expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly. So if Apollos had written an epistle, you will be misled passionately reading the, reading the limitation of a man. You see, let me tell you this. One of the challenges with the body of Christ, and I say this respectfully, is that many times limitations and create doctrines out of them. And we mentor people from the vista of our limitation. And from one generation to one gen another generation, we begin to close the gap or we begin to close the opportunity for God to manifest his vastness. So if I never experience favor in my life, everyone who is mentored by me will be mentored to disregard that reality. If I do not experience speed in my life, I, I convert my pain to a theology. And now I teach it so that whoever should have, should release his faith for more of God, now is compelled as a proof of his loyalty to my ideology. He now sabotages an opportunity to step into the fullness of God. I hope you understand what I'm saying. This is not a call to sarcasm. This is a believer's conference. We are challenging ourselves to say there is more in God. Oh yes, there is more. Brothers and sisters, once again, let's become students of history. There is more in God. Time will fail me, Hebrews says, to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. I came to shake your faith and shake your convictions and tear that limitation to let you know that this God you see is more than the frame of our experiences. And we must tell him, Maranatha, come. More of you, the fullness of your counsel. When I pray for 100 people and only two people are healed, I turn my embarrassment into a theology. Rather than using it as a drive to press for deeper dimensions, knowing that God is true and only men are liars. I would turn my embarrassment and say the person who did not get healed, I find a very intelligent theological reason. And everybody who watches me, they will frame their lives after my limitation. Let me tell you sincerely, this God that we serve, we are yet to scratch a bit of the, the vastness of the power, the grace, the possibilities that are in Christ. And I believe in the name of Jesus that in our lifetime, that we are hungry and desperate and unashamed enough to push to these dimensions, that once again we will sign a signature in this generation that there were men and women who knew God and proved their knowledge of him through the exploits and the impacts. The Bible says, but the people that do know their God, they shall be strong, capacity, and then they will do exploits. Please sit down. Are we blessed? So we must establish that fact. He says, stand in the ways and see. 
As for the old path, the old path is not the path of a denomination. No. The old path is, you see, God, let me tell you how God works. Every time he's about to introduce himself in a new way, he simulates a pattern around it for continuity. Are we together? So that whoever wants to experience that dimension of God will have to learn the pattern he created. So for instance, when he was going to introduce, because until Adam came, there was no idea of expansion through reproduction. It was only creation. This is what confused the devil. All of a sudden, he sees a woman's stomach protruding and then another man comes out of it and says, what is this? Every time God wanted to expand, he would create. But he invented the formula of reproduction through Adam and Eve. That was why Satan looked for Cain. That was the first man who was the product of reproduction, Cain. That meant Satan was seeing a formula God had put in man now that the womb of a woman can now make many more men. He didn't know that the woman's womb could get pregnant again. He thought Cain was the only one, so he came to him. <laughs> now, we're not, please sit down, sit down, sit down. This is not, we're not, this is not where I'm going at all. Just, just help me support my focus. Are we together? you want a baby you subscribe to the pattern that was created is that true salvation when Jesus came he didn't just save man do you know as powerful as God was and is he did not cast sin out of men he didn't stand to say I God Yahweh I use my might as the creator of the heavens and the earth and I cast sin out of men because he had created a pattern. The pattern says without the shedding of blood, it is illegal to remit sins. It's a pattern. Number two, there is a pattern that says the wages of sin is death. Now, when God came to the earth, he himself had to submit to those patterns. Now, listen carefully. Spiritual patterns hold the key to the exploits of the saints in this kingdom. It takes more than a good desire. It takes more than a kind, well-meaning heart. Brothers and sisters, hear me. There are many well-meaning people, well-meaning preachers. The exploits that your pastor is having today is not just because he's a good man. As wonderful as he is and his dear wife, I can tell you that he has found like a spiritual archaeologist, spiritual patterns, these are the patterns that secure the glory of God. So there is a pattern that is responsible for administering salvation. Are we together now? You do not think salvation and then you are saved. No, that's not the pattern for it. The pattern that administers salvation as we know, new birth, is found in Romans chapter 10 when you read from verse 8 to 10. Is that true? The Bible says the word is near you in your mouth and in your hearts. The word of faith which we preach that if you will confess, that's the pattern, with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your hearts that God raised him from the dead, salvation is administered to you. The formula is in the next verse. It says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth salvation is, I mean confession is made unto salvation. So it is a pattern. Anybody who does not subscribe to that pattern is not saved. It's as honest and sincere and simple as that. There are spiritual patterns that are responsible for releasing and activating the blessing of the Lord upon the believer. Patterns that relate to giving. For instance, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. It's not an information, it's a pattern. Another spiritual pattern that supports your longevity is he who does not walk should not eat. 
is an advice that if you plan to be lazy, forget about food because eating without walking will kill you. This is a medical advice. These are spiritual patterns. So part of the ways you choose life is that anytime you see a plate of food in front of you, ask yourself, what work is this food going to support? This is how to live long. It's an advice. Are we together? There is a pattern that is responsible for renewal. The Bible says, has thou not heard, seen, has thou not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, are we together? That he is not weary, he does not faint. Then the Bible says, even the young men will faint and the youth will be weary. It says, but they that wait is a pattern. It's not just an information that, that it is human to be weary. The wear and tear, the vicissitudes of life can beat down your focus, your zeal, and your power. Incorporate this pattern to your spiritual work and you will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. So every time you are weary and you are fainting, that is an information that your pain is telling you you are violating a spiritual pattern. Hmm. The Bible says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Are we together now? So he gave you a pattern that encapsulates Satan's work. So for you to verify whether it is the devil's search for these things, is there stealing in it? Is there killing in it? Is there destruction in it? The moment you see it, you know that that is a pattern. There is also a pattern that shows you when the kingdom of God shows up in a place. It says the kingdom of God encapsulates these tripartite factors, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. This is a prophetic compendium of patterns, roadmaps that lead to mysterious outcomes. These are the principles that turn ordinary people to signs and wonders. That we reign and we rule in this kingdom on the strength of the patterns we have found. Our possibilities are not defined by the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. They are predicated upon our comprehending the spiritual patterns. So two people loved by God can be in Abia state. Sincere believers, but their possibilities can be east and west. It's not a measure of the love of God for them. It is a measure of how far they have been able to discover the patterns that are responsible for the outcomes they desire. This is a very powerful revelation. The name given to this revelation is Jesus the way. Jesus did not say, I am life alone. He said, I am the way, the methodology of the kingdom. Is God speaking to someone? Several people desire the anointing, but there are spiritual patterns that control and govern both the reception and the administration of the anointing. You see, mastery makes difficult things look easy, but behind them is a, is a diligent study of their operations. Please hear me, saints of God. The quality of my life and your life in this kingdom will depend on how much we are willing to obtain grace from God and become students in the school of the Spirit to search for the patterns not just to desire the outcome that those patterns produce, to search for it. This church is growing and increasing and making impact at a global scale because there is a pattern. I assure you, there is a pattern. There is nobody sincerely who commands certain degrees of exploit who does not know what he is doing. It's just that the, the awareness of the mercy of God will make you just say, look, it's the all glory to God. But the truth is, where you probe deeply, they will sincerely tell you, I am what I am by the grace of God. But this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than ye all. There is a labor dimension of faith. 
that helps you to birth certain spiritual patterns. Now my question very briefly before we pray is which spiritual pattern do you not know? Leave the one you know. Could it be that my life and your life you will say so there is a relationship between your words and your victory it's a pattern it says let the redeemed of the Lord he already called them the redeemed but he says say so because everything starts from the realm of the spirit but will require authorization from the saints to be manifest it is always the spirit and the bride that says come so when the spirit says come, he's waiting for the bride on earth to also say come. When the spirit says lifted, the bride must also say lifted. It is the spirit and the bride that tells the word to come. It's a pattern. Forever, oh Lord, your word is settled, not in your life, in heaven. It tells you the location where the word is settled. It will take faith and engage in these patterns for it to become a reality in your life. Open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. There is a spiritual pattern responsible for speed. The Bible says, Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Jezreel. That means there is something you can engage in the spirit that will release a supply of that grace and your results become from a human standpoint it will look as if you held a charm can i tell you this now please listen very carefully every dimension of results you see listen carefully whether it came from a man of god or god as you call it or it came from a herbalist or it came from diviners are we together now if you ever see any result that is superhuman it was a manipulation of spiritual laws there is only one force and one power once have I spoken and twice that how many All. if it ever works is because the power of God, not necessarily God, was involved in that process. If God is not involved in that process, it does not work. And without him was not anything made, including the result of a heathen. Without him was not anything made that was made. But this is, let me explain to you why it seems to happen even without their loyalty to God. There are three dimensions of accessing the power of God in this kingdom. Maybe I'll wrap up with it tonight. Number one is the dimension of God's power and grace that comes through encounters. Direct encounters with God. When you have a solid encounter with the God of the Bible, there is a dimension of power that is given to you as a token, as a reward for your press for meeting him. Now, the highest level of spiritual power that can be given to a man comes through that platform. Please listen carefully. Are we together now? That when a man so presses beyond all the distractions and eventually you are able to touch the heart of God in a way that causes him to reveal himself to you. The law is found in Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. And you shall seek me, he says, and find me when you search for me with all your heart that means if you don't find me the diagnosis is that something in your heart is not seeking for me the jealousy of god mandates that all of you is directed towards him for you to really find him are we together yes sir. so encounters what is an encounter an experience that makes god real an experience, generally speaking, that furnishes the reality of whether a person, an idea, whatever it is to you. When you have, it doesn't have to be a visionary, in, in a visionary way. But the assignment of an encounter is to create conviction. Without encounters, the saints will not have conviction. 
but I know whom I believe. Not just that I believe him, I know whom I believe and I am persuaded. It is on the strength of encounters that the apostle can say, what shall separate us from the love of God? It's not a memory verse. It's a product of an encounter. Please listen to me. You must trust God for the grace to press to. When one encounter with God will answer many prayer points at once. There are many, many kinds of prayers you will not pray again when you really have an encounter. One of my dear people will always say that when you have these encounters, it will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life. Everybody say encounters. You must desire encounters with all your heart. There are certain dimensions of anointings. For a generation, no, it will come through encounters. And can I tell you this? Sincerely, when it comes, it has come. It will be clear that the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. If you are still doubting and hoping it's there, or it's not, it's, then it means it's not there. Number two, very quickly, the second platform that affords us the opportunity to receive the unction and the possibilities to demonstrate the might of God in this kingdom is the mysteries or the principles of the kingdom such as what I'm teaching you now. There is a dimension of the power of God invested in these principles. You don't have to believe him to access it. You just, it is controlled by knowledge and understanding, not intimacy. You don't, intimacy is not a condition to receive power at that level. It is knowledge and understanding. So I can ignore the God of the Bible and through the humility and meekness, I can learn from people who have found these patterns. They may not admit the God who delivered it. Like the secular, the business principles they used to excel, the leadership principles. These are all principles. If it ever works, it's because there is God in that equation. Now, they may not desire an encounter with that God. But understanding has brought them to a point where they are able to walk those principles. And there is a dimension of his power invested in principles. If, God forbid not to play with your mind, but if a terrorist decides to sow in rainy season, the soil, the earth will not refuse to produce because there is a pattern. The power of God has already been in, it's already invested in that. Are, are we together now? Yes. Someone can be insulting God and still have a child after nine months because there is a pattern. Are we together now? Someone will insult God before he goes to bed and wake up in the morning and keep insulting again because there is a pattern. It is the second level. The key to receiving at that level is not intimacy. The key to receiving at that level is understanding. Are we together? The third platform is called covenant alignment. Let me explain it. The third platform for receiving power in this kingdom is called covenant alignment. Please say covenant alignment. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. We have to round up. Listen. Look at me. Do you know the way God advances his kingdom, pastor, is that when God wants to introduce a dimension of his possibilities to a generation, he finds a man. Everybody say a man. Amen. Not man. He finds a man and enters a personal covenant with that man through the sacrifice of alignment. 
he enters a personal covenant with that man. Are we together now? That covenant becomes the legitimate authorization for God to reveal that dimension of him in the earth. And for as long as that man is alive, any other person who must host that dimension of God must be able to do it in alignment to God and that system he has created. I pray that your eyes will be open to what I'm sharing with you. Hmm. So, there are men who are carrying anointings. There are men who are carrying mantles. But there are men who are spiritual systems. Don't be carried away by the body you are looking at. And it is not everybody, but this is true. Read your Bible and you will see that there are men. It was not mantles they carried. Abraham did not carry mantles. Abraham was a spiritual system that was referred to in Isaiah 51. That if you want to study what it means to be blessed in the kingdom, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that bore you. I called him and blessed him and increased him. Abraham is my recommended portrait for the blessing. You ever ignore that reality, if you like serve God as much as you want, he will refer you back to that pattern. Pattern number two, system number two, Jacob. Jacob is God's biblical pattern for encounters. That every time you want to encounter God, the individual that embodies that revelation is Jacob. Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. The walls and they that dwell therein. When you read on, it says, This is the generation that seek thy face, O Jacob, or O God of Jacob. Until Jacob had an encounter, there was no God of Jacob. It was God of Abraham and God of Isaac. In Genesis 28, Jacob lay in the night to sleep in a place called Luz that will later be changed to Bethel. Are we together now? And the Bible says when he lay down to sleep, suddenly he saw a ladder that connected the earth and heaven. Is it in your Bible? I hope you know they were not parables. These were things that actually happened. And he saw angels ascending and descending and at the top of it was God. Are we together now? And he began to speak to him. And the Bible says he got up and said, The Lord was in this place. And I knew not. The Bible is not ashamed to leave Jacob's mistake for us to learn. That Jacob made a clear mistake. He admitted with all humility that I missed this opportunity for an encounter. The next thing that will happen in Jacob's life, he was too innocent for an encounter. The next episode of his life will be his pain in the house of Laban. After defrauding him, after wasting his time, God said, let's try again. Now Genesis 32, Jacob dismissed his wives. Jacob dismissed his animals. When he was alone, God said, let me see if you can get it this time around. Then came a man in the night. Listen carefully. Jacob held him and he said, I missed it the first time. I have learned through my pain the value of your presence. I have learned through my pain. Listen carefully. He said, leave me for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless. Now watch this. Let me show you how the God of Jacob was being formed. That God captured that experience and added his name on it. And said, you can study the God of Jacob by studying Jacob. Are we blessed? These men were not carrying mantles. They were spiritual systems. The dimension of God committed to them is still valid today. And then, he said, what is your name? That means everything that has to do with a true encounter must affect your identity, must affect your office, must affect your authority. 
Because it's a name is a dimension of identification. A name can represent a limitation like Jabez. Are we together? What is your name? And he says, Jacob. He says, thou shalt no more be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. And he touched his thigh. That means the condition for a genuine encounter is that something must be in your life that makes you incomplete without God. Jacob, if you want an encounter, I must do something to you that leaves you permanently deficient without me. So I become the completer of your life. Then the Bible says he blessed him and the sun arose and he called that place Peniel, the face of God. For I have seen God face to face and my life is spared. And God said, Jacob, congratulations. You, you did not just qualify for an experience. You have become a spiritual system to model how men can find God. Another Another spiritual system was this mystery. This mystery system disguised in a body we call Elijah. The first manifestation of Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, was not in the man Elijah. The first manifestation of that mystery was in a man called Noah. <laughs> Goodness, my God, my God, my God. You see, Elijah is a spiritual system that foreruns revival. It's an apostolic and a prophetic system. It has nothing to do with a man. Every time God is about to come, Elijah must precede him. It's a pattern. So before the flood and the judgment, that spirit came in a man called Noah. Then when Jezebel and the prophets of Baal were persecuting the people of God, that system came again, embodied now in a man called Elijah the Tishbite. Are we together? When Elijah died, the pattern still remained. When I say died, you know what I mean. Now exited his duty here. Elijah returns back in a man who was found in a wilderness eating locusts and wild honey. Is it in your Bible? He was no longer called Elijah. He was called John the prophet. He was not the Baptist. Baptism was a strategy to help him find Jesus. But Elijah was a prophet. Are we together now? Suddenly a man shows up, a spiritual system. So Satan studied that system and started his own tomb. The first of that system was Cain. And Cain built a city and named him after his child. And then we now see that there was another spiritual system called Nimrod Kush. Theologically speaking, he killed his father and married his mother, Samiramai. That's how he became Nimrod Kush. He, he manipulated a pattern that gave him so much influence and they wanted to build a city whose top would reach the heavens. And God knew they were going to do it. He had to be the one to come and scatter it. Are we together? Then we see another spiritual pattern represented in a she goddess called Jezebel. That Jezebel is not just a woman. Are we together now? Delilah is not just a woman. Delilah is a spiritual pattern that represents seduction. A spiritual system that destroys great men and great things. That if you want to study how the great fall, it is represented in this evil communication you call Delilah. It's not a woman. The spirit that was on Delilah can come on a man. And it will be, it will, it is, it is destruction through seduction. That's how the pattern operates. For Jezebel is a spirit that attacks influence by partnering with government. Every time Jezebel shows up, she cannot be activated until she's in partnership with government. So whether it's Herodias or Jezebel herself with Ahab, the, when Jezebel comes, it targets influence. Are we together? 
Elijah also represents not just the prophetic and the apostolic, but the spirit that births revivals within a territory. Elijah was recommended as a case study when Apostle James was teaching people about prayer. Are we together? He used an example. He said Elijah was a man of like passion. That means when you want to use prayer to change the spiritual climate of a territory, study Elijah. Elijah shot a territory for three and a half years. I hope you know Elijah was not the only one who knew God. There were other prophets, remember, under the custody of Obadiah. Don't you think one of them would have prophesied and said, God, forget about this man. Let me tell you this, God honors these systems. Let me give you one more of this system. This mysterious man called Samuel. Samuel was not just a prophet. Samuel was a mysterious man whose word never fell to the ground. God had rejected Saul as king and was ready to lift David. Samuel refused and David's destiny was in trouble because one man, you thought God would bypass him. God had to come and explain to him and say, Samuel, how long will you weep? Seeing that I've rejected, please carry the horn. Moses was a spiritual pattern. Look at this. Moses is a man who is a stammerer and yet part of his spirit comes on 70 elders and they prophesied they could not keep quiet and yet that was what was in one man and he was moving every day. The, a part of the spirit in one man came on people who were elders with all their training they prophesied from morning till night. It was this mistake that costed Saul his throne. He thought men were just men. And he said, look, the, the pressure was coming on him to offer the sack. He said, we can't wait for Samuel. And when he finished, Samuel came and said, no, you have done foolishly. You would have allowed me to come and God would have established your throne forever. Now you have done this, the kingdom is taken away from you. This is not human worship. I am showing you that the results we command in this kingdom are mysteriously tied I'm teaching you covenant alignment. I think that's how we got here. Please spare me just a few minutes and we're done. That means on earth today with all humility, the spiritual system that represents faith is Kenneth Copeland. As old as he looks and he may share something you may think is not Rema, but he is an embodiment of a spiritual system by covenant. That's why God will have to keep him long enough to make sure that that territory gets that grace before he transits. Are we together now? Reinhard Bonke was a spiritual system that represented the evangelistic. You will never work at a global scale ignoring that personality. This is not human worship. I'm showing you the third way to receive. No matter how much you press into God, he will refer you back to his system. Benny Hinn today represents the healing ministry and that came from Oral Roberts. This, these things are not, it's not an invention. When that person who is the system dies, God will find another person and enter a covenant that represents continuity. John the Baptist was not just a prophet. When Jesus came to the earth, if Jesus ignored John the Baptist, he would have been surprised. Even though he was the son of the living God. For 30 years, your Jesus walked under a closed heaven. Your Jesus, read your Bible. As the son of the living God, yet his heavens were not open. Until he had to look for the system. Jesus, John did not... Listen, when John was in the wilderness, a formula was given to him that whoever you baptize and you see the heavens open, that is the lamb. So John would pour water and say, no, go. John would pour water and say, no, go. Pour water. Then he looks at a...
30 year old young man come in and says behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and Jesus said no suffer it to be so that all scripture this is a pattern that not even me will violate John said I am not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe Jesus said you are right but I am on earth now I must submit to that pattern And then the Bible says, John held Jesus, dipped him in water, brought him out. What does your Bible say? And the heavens opened. And then God now spoke and said, this is my beloved son. Question, what was he before? And then listen, he said, this is my beloved son. Who has visited your crusade? No, in whom I am well pleased. He said, as a result of this submission, hear ye him. Everywhere Jesus went, they could not resist his ministry because there was a hear ye him anointing. There is a grace. Do you believe what I'm saying? Now, I know here and there you will always find exaggerations where people will use this to manipulate people. But let me tell you this. We can do nothing against the truth or the truth, but for the truth. This ministry you see, there is a dimension of God's grace that has been committed to your pastor. Are we together now? For as long as you do not discern and tap into it through honor, through meekness and through alignment, there are certain dimensions of grace that will never be reproduced in your life. Believe me when I tell you this. Yes. Saul, who later became Paul, encountered Jesus Christ. After he encountered Jesus Christ, you would think that's the end. Jesus now referred him back. After an encounter, he said, go and wait. Somebody in the body will come and continue that thing to you. Jesus referred him back. Why will you need someone else when you've met Jesus? He still referred him back. When you honor men, it is not human worship. When it is done within the jurisdiction of scripture, you are discerning that there is a dimension of the investment of God upon this man, otherwise certain results will not be possible. Listen, there are results that are bigger than your personal spiritual life. It is an elevation that the election of grace has taken you to. Are we together? Yes. While it is true that many times we men of God would like to tell you everything you see is a perfect reflection of our spiritual lives. It may not be entirely true. There are dimensions of this elevation that is purely an election of grace. And it is because of what God is doing and his program. So encounters, mysteries, covenant alignment. There are many people who came under certain mysterious graces that never beg. Even before they started knowing the principles of finance, they started increasing. They didn't even know why. They were not keeping the principles at all. But because, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may bless him for Jonathan's sake, not for his sake? There are people who came under certain graces and their prayer lives entered certain dimensions before they themselves decided to be serious with prayer. The same way you are joined to certain friends and without your intention, you begin to become maybe a wayward person. You see that now. It's more than an information. It's not just what they told you. There was a transference of spirits too. Please listen to me. I know that our time is gone. What would take, even if it's two or three minutes to pray, my charge to you tonight 
is that scattered in this scripture are the spiritual patterns that are responsible for the dominion of the saints. Now we can argue it. Some of you may disbelieve it, but the truth remains the truth. Nobody rises by mistake in this kingdom. No. We engage these mysteries through light. It's an ancient part. We didn't invent it. We only discovered it. That when you find that part, you begin to rise in a way as though the devil does not exist. And I believe the burden that is on the heart of your pastor and his dear wife is to see that not only this precious assembly, but that the entire city and indeed the entire eastern region that you come into a greater comprehension of these spiritual patterns. There is something you can introduce to your business that will make people ask you, do you know if, if you see a gentleman today who maybe is just struggling or managing his life, let's assume by next week, you suddenly find out that he becomes a multi-millionaire. In all honesty, you will not ask him, what did you do? You will say, where did you go to? This kind of result is not about what you have done again. Where, just be honest, I will keep it, it's between me and you. What, where did you go to? Because there are some results that are, that respond with the sequence of economy. But there are others, this one is the finger of God. The Bible says if it is the Lord's doing, it must be marvelous. I'm saying this because there are extraordinary results that many of you will begin to produce from this night. Believe me. Results that will dumbfound principalities and powers that some of you will return back home and all of a sudden you will see that your prayer life is, is as though something rested upon you. Some of you will find out that you will open your Bible and there is a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. It's as though you've never read your Bible again. Transference of spiritual possibilities. For some of you, you will find out that the book of remembrance is open over you. The Bible says, and that night the king could not sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And they opened. There were many people who did good, but his eyes went to Mordecai and said, what shall be done to such a man? There are some of you, the pattern that you will see is what will activate favor. Exodus 3.21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of this. You are looking at your family. I'd like you to look in one minute and just say, wow. So if my father had known this if my sincere missionary parents as well meaning as they were if they only knew that there was a pattern that prov that provides speed that there is a pattern that can veto causes and yokes regardless the speakings of darkness and bring a man to a position of power in the spirit are you ready to pray just for one minute our time is up I'd like you to lift your voice and cry seriously. Lord, I'm ready to shift to a higher dimension spiritually. Open my eyes to the mysteries and the patterns that empower my next dimension. Someone is praying. I release my faith with your pastor so that you will produce real results. For some of you, you need a multiplication of unction. The current level of grace that you carry cannot produce the results you desire. Just for a minute, lift your voice and pray. Some of you here are pastors. You are trusting God for numerical increase. I assure you there is a pattern. There is a spiritual pattern responsible for growth, responsible for increase. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's from me. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's from me.
Hallelujah. Please look up. Let me just encourage you. I'm sure that your pastor will come. We may not have the time to minister to the sick. I'd like you to come with your heart open tomorrow and trust God. Among the many things that I believe that God will be doing tomorrow is transference of graces. Graces are transferable. There is no one, it is never God's intention that a dimension of possibility resides and remains only with one person. Whenever he sends a word to Jacob, it's because he intends for it to reach Israel. So come with your heart opened. You are in ministry, you are trusting God to really shift you. Some of you have prayer groups. Some of you, you discern that there are graces that God is giving you, that you are part of the prophetic program of God within the east of the Niger, please come with your heart opened. Some of you are trusting God for a release or a higher release of certain dimensions of grace, discernment, the prophetic. Come with your heart open. Hallelujah. And I pray for you tonight, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. Let there be angelic activities on your behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ, we release all kinds of breakthroughs tonight. We command all kinds of possibilities tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that as a result of this encounter, may your hunger for spiritual things multiply. In the name of Jesus, may your appetite for the things of the Spirit be enlarged. May your passion for God be increased in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. While we remain standing, can we just raise our two hands and just speak in the Holy Ghost? Can we just be very, very intentional about speaking in the Holy Ghost? Can we just speak in the Holy Ghost? Can we speak in the Holy Ghost? Can we just speak in the Holy Ghost? 